So now we look into the next control flow mechanism in programming, and this is known as loops. And the idea behind a loop is, uh, let's say, for example, I decided to be just a terrible, terrible instructor, and I told you your homework assignment was to print Mr. Goita is awesome 100 times. Yes, conceded. Yes, I am. Whatever. So what would happen is, you know, you'd probably look at it and you'd start to get a really good feel for copy and paste, you know, you'd highlight the code and then you'd control C and then you'd control V and then you'd highlight that again, now you have two lines, control C, control V, and you do this a few times. And then you'd hit, eventually hit, you know, about 128 and then you delete 28 and you're like, ah, oh, alright, done deal. That's pretty annoying, you know, I'm a lazy programmer, I don't like to do things more than once. So how can we tackle uh, this issue? And this is actually where we bring in the idea of a loop. So how's a loop work? Uh, pretty much it acts the same way as when we looked at the if statement. If we think about the if statement for a second, I wrote if some conditional right here. And then I put code inside here and I executed that. If this was true only if this was true the same kind of concept actually comes in with my while loop if we take a look here instead of saying if I've now replaced that keyword with while again this is a special word that Java knows and it understands Oh, alright well if I see this while loop uh, then right beside it inside the parentheses is going to be a conditional statement if this conditional statement is true execute all the code in between these curly braces and you'll see it continues to do this now when it as you can kind of see with this little flow chart t thing here once it's done the code it actually goes back up it actually goes back to the top and reassesses that while loop conditional so in this case uh, int i equals uh, zero all right i while i is less than a hundred i is zero so that right now is zero that's true so we do a system dot out dot print line mr Guid is awesome i plus plus we increment i we make i suddenly become one so then we do the while loop again we reassess the while loop is i again this time one true yes it is or it is I uh, which equals one less than 100 is that true yes it is we execute this line of code again so we then do uh, system dot out dot print line mr. Guida is awesome I plus plus again we increment I I now becomes two and we go and reassess the conditional loop a second time we go is two less than 100 we continue to do this over and over again because as you can see what it allows us to do is take uh, some task and repeatedly do it so we kind of take a look at that same sort of structure the entire time so one of the things that we can do an idea of what we can do with this is we can actually use this eye this eye right here and we can design our loops to work in conjunction with this it's not just say a counter Say, for example, I want to just take all the numbers from uh, 1 to 100 and add them together. You know, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot, 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 99, 100. I got a bunch of numbers I got to go through. Oh, okay, how do I tackle this problem? Again, I don't want to have to write my code and have plus, you know, some plus plus. Uh, all the time, or plus equals one, plus equal two, plus equal three. I don't want to do those things. I'm lazy. I want to be able to write it in one or two lines if possible. And that's what we see here. Again, we have set up sort of this is known as my running total. And that's exactly what it does, is it's just a running total. And I go, all right, well, you know, then here's my counter counter and while my counter is less than my kind of condition 
I go and I say, all right, well, what do I do? Reassess what sum is, and then increment my counter. So sum right now is zero, so zero plus i. i right now is one. So all of a sudden, sum, sum, just to draw it out here, sum becomes one. Increment i, so i went from one to two. We go back up to the top, and we do this again. And we'll see that, all right, well, this is now a one, this is now a two. And we say, all right, well, add these two numbers together, one plus two, that becomes three, sum now is three i gets incremented. So i goes from 2 to 3. And one more time just to reinforce that. We look at it. Sum again is now 3. i is 3. Add those together. Sum becomes 6. i becomes 4. We continue to do this a hundred times up until the point where we eventually get that number, whatever that number is. It's a big number obviously as you can tell. Uh, but this is where loops can tackle us, or uh, let us tackle a problem that is a little bit more uh, difficult because it, it runs so big.